Kami Girl here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a review of the brand new My Little Pony Equestria Girl figures. Now these figures aren't the dolls or the Equestria Girl minis, but instead a brand new line that Hasbro is introducing in order to, some are speculating, replace the Equestria Girl mini line. Because this is the case in this review, we're going to be comparing these dolls that I was able to pick up at Target for $4.99 with an original Equestria Girl mini release and see what the difference between the two are and which one's better. So let's go ahead and take a look at the four figures I was able to find. So the characters I was able to find include Pinkie Pie, Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash, and Applejack. So the packaging for these figures is rather plain and simple, but the only difference between each release is the color of the back card and this little strip of paper down in the front. So for example, Applejack right here has a green back card and kind of a green autumn theme to this bottom piece here with a lovely picture of Applejack followed by some leaves and apple pie and another picture of Applejack on the side. Pinkie Pie, of course, has a party theme with some balloons and confetti. Twilight Sparkle has a whole lot of stars and apparently nothing else. And lastly, we have Rainbow Dash, who looks really awesome on this right picture, but on this other picture, it makes me believe that she snapped her neck in half. Her theming is headphones and music notes and stars for some reason. So the back of the packaging for these is quite possibly the most boring thing I've seen in quite some time. I mean, look at it, it's a giant wall of text. I've seen more interesting things in my engineering textbooks. But alas, I am a reviewer, which means I have to take a look at all this, starting from the top. Whoa, hold the phone there. Pawtucket, Rhode Island, that's actually a place? That's the setting of the littlest pet shop show that's currently on Discovery Family Netflix. Ugh, we see what you did there, Hasbro. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna stop right there before I butcher any more of the Spanish. And interesting enough, this set is actually made in Vietnam and not in China. Who would have known? And of course, in the top corner, you can give even more money to Hasbro by completing your set. So look out and buy the other figure. And in this case, we have Pinkie Pie on the back of this box. So let's not waste any more time and unbox all four of these girls so we can take a look at the figures themselves and all these wonderful accessories they come with. And of course, most importantly, compare them to the original Equestria Girl minifigures. Alrighty, now that these figures have finally been unboxed, we can take a closer look at them, starting off with Pinkie Pie over here. So Pinkie Pie is super adorable. Let's start off at the top here. She has rubbery hair, which is already one big change from the original Equestria Girl minifigures. I think they did this because one of the big problems with the Equestria Girl minis is how top heavy they were. They had so much hair, and of course the hair was made of plastic, so the figures would fall over often. So in order to combat this, I'm guessing they made this out of rubber, which is a lot lighter, so the figures can stand up nicely on their own. One benefit of this is the fact that the hair is slightly flexible at the ends. However, part of me is not a complete fan of it. I think it's because of the execution that Hasbro did with it. Just, you can see a little bit of white residue in the hair and it's kind of sticky in some areas, which I'm not a fan of. But hopefully Hasbro will improve the quality over time, making them a good product. Uh, who I'm kidding, it's Hasbro. This is the best we're gonna get. Anyways, in terms of her face, she is super adorable. She has perfect eyes, a giant white smile, and beautiful eyebrows, and a cute little button nose. The outfit Pinkie Pie sporting is a lovely yellow jacket with a whole bunch of hearts on it, a pink ruffle skirt, and super adorable blue sandals. She also comes with some coffee, which of course, as everyone knows, Pinkie Pie definitely needs more caffeine. Now, of course, if you hadn't noticed already, the clothes are made of rubber, which is really cool just because it kind of reminds me of the old Polly Pockets from the early 2000s. Those were the ones I used to play with that had rubbery clothes that you could take on and off. Now, one problem I have, though, is that if you flip it around on these figures, look at the shirt. What is this? They, like, 
didn't include the arms. I know the old Polly Pockets, they would have the slit right here so you can slip them on, but I hate the fact they didn't cover up the arms completely. That just seems so cheap. You know, I think this is what the LOLs do, but uh, I just hate it so much. It looks awful, and I know you're looking at the doll from the front most of the time, and the hair kind of covers it up, but oh gosh, I just really wish they would have covered the complete back portion for the shirt. I mean, the skirt and the shoes look perfect, so why not the shirt? Anyways, for the purposes of science, let's go ahead and undress Pinkie Pie so we can take a look at her without any of her clothes on. So here's what Pinkie Pie looks like undressed, and luckily YouTube cannot flag this video down for nudity as she's wearing a tank top and little white underwear. So her tank top actually has her cutie mark on it, completely blue, and her underwear is adorable. Look at all the details. They put little polka dots and a tiny little bow. I love that so much. They went the extra mile. They really didn't need to do that, but they did, and I love it. So in terms of articulation for this figure, there's five basic points at the head, the arms, and in the legs. One thing about the articulation I have to point out though is that because these are rubber shirts and jackets, if you move the arms up around with the um, jacket on, sometimes it can slip out like so, and that's because of course of how they were produced. If this was closed, this would not be as much of an issue or no issue at all. So that is unfortunate, however, Pinkie Pie does look good with just the skirt on because she has a really adorable tank top. So, that is the in-depth review of Pinkie Pie. We'll be a lot faster with the other ones, but I wanted to cover all my bases with one figure. Moving from Pinkie Pie, we have Applejack next. So, Applejack's accessories include this little yellow handbag with apples on it, an orange poncho, a blue jean skirt, and of course, cowgirl boots. Her painted on shirt, of course, has an apple on it, and I do appreciate they included both green and red on the shirt and her hair is tied up in the back. Next, we have Sai Twai over here. Sai Twai comes with a tablet, a blazer, a purple skirt with some stars on it, and some navy shoes. She also comes with her signature black glasses that you can take on and off, and her hair is tied up just like it is in the show. Last but not least, we have Rainbow Dash. So Rainbow Dash's hair consists of four colors like the Equestria Girl minis, the red, orange, yellow, green, and all blue in the back. Speaking of back, this is the prime example of what I hate about these clothes. I get the shirts to an extent, but the pants, the pants, look at these look like cowboy chaps. Like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? This is awful. Oh my gosh, I can't stand it. I'm not going to talk about it anymore, but this triggers me so much. It is not hard. You, some people will say, well, it's easier to put the pants on when it's like this. No, it is easy to put the pants on. When I was a girl, the pants were never the hard part. The shirts were the hard part. So I get the shirts to an extent, but the pants, this is just sad. This looks awful. Anyways, rant over. Looking at her from the front, instead of that horrendous back, you could see her clothes include a blue hoodie that you can take on and off, of course. And underneath that blue hoodie, there is a tank top with her cutie mark on it. Her pants consist of four stripes, with each stripe being a different color and she's rocking some pretty awesome blue tennis shoes. Her accessory is of course a red gym bag. She's probably going to soccer practice. So now that we have looked at all the figures, it is time to compare these new figures to an Equestria Girl mini figure. Starting off with their size, already can tell that the minis are a whole lot bigger than the new figures, which is weird because these are called Equestria Girl minis. Interesting. Aside from that, the Equestria Girl Minis has more points of articulation than this new figure. So the Equestria Girl Minis has, of course, elbow and knee articulation. While, as I mentioned before, these figures only have the standard five points of articulation. They both have the rubbery skirts, however, the Equestria Girl Minis have just the painted on shirt and the extra painted on detailing while these figures have slight detailing on their shirt, but they do come with accessories so you can kind of customize their look a little bit more. In terms of their face mold, I think that both of them are really nice and their body molds as well. I think they both look really good and very accurate to the cartoon that they're portraying. However, in the end, I do prefer the Equestria Girl minis over these new Equestria Girl figures. The level of detail in these figures is just so much better compared to these but I can understand why they made these. In terms 
of a collector, I much rather these Equestria Girl minifigures, but if I was a child, I know I would for sure adore these Equestria Girl figures, the ones on the right, just because there's so much more playability with them. You can change their clothes. They can stand up too. That's something I forgot to mention. They can stand up quite easily. As you can see, Pinkie Pie doesn't need a stand, while uh, Miss Dazzling over here definitely needs a stand, and even then, she falls over quite easily. I just wish that both lines could coexist together at the same time, however, I feel like the fact that these are much easier to produce and the fact that there's higher playability in these makes it so Hasbro wants to focus their time and money on these new Equestria figures. But those are my thoughts on these new figures. Why don't you let me know in the comments down below what do you think of the new Equestria Girl figures and do you rather these or the old Equestria Girl minis? Anyways, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos in the future.